Hi, this is Jeff Challen. Welcome to CS125 and to our first lab. One of the things we're going to do in this lab and in the screencast is get you set up with Java installed. So I'm going to start a couple of downloads to initiate this process and then we'll talk a little bit about what's happening. So the place to start is the course website. We'll have a link up to these instructions for installing Java. Um, this semester we're going to use Java version 10.0.2. That's the latest version of Java at the point uh, when we start the semester. Um, you're going to come over. I'm going to show you how to do this on Windows first, and then we'll look at how to do it on Mac as well. The process is almost identical. So you end up on Oracle's website. Uh, they're the company that maintains Java now. Um, this shows that we're going to download the Java SE development kit. That's important. So there's also a version of Java that does not allow you to build Java applications, but that's not the one you want. If you use the link on the course website, you're going to end up in the right place. I'm going to click that I'm going to accept the license agreement, and then I'm going to start the appropriate download for my platform. So I'm on a Windows machine. I'm going to let that go. Over here, I'm going to show you how to do this on Mac. So again, I'm on the same page. I'm going to use the same link. I'm going to find myself on the same page on Oracle's website. I'm going to accept the license agreement again, and I'm going to begin downloading the package for Mac. If you have a Linux machine or apparently a Solaris machine, uh, there are also packages that you can install, but particularly if you have a Linux machine, there might be easier ways to install Java. We have some instructions on the website for how to do that. All right, so uh, this is almost finished downloading. Java is the language we use for this class. It's a very powerful programming language, allows you to do a lot of cool things. One of the things we'll get to later in the semester is uh, building some Android applications. That's probably one of the more exciting things you can do with Java today. Uh, but people build all sorts of things using Java. They build um, server-side web applications. They build standalone GUI-based tools. There's really a lot of things you can do with the language, and it's a great language to learn. Okay, so I've gotten both of these packages downloaded. Um, now I'm going to start the install process on Windows. Usually there's some sort of um, confirmation dialog you have to go through. On my Mac, I already have a, a version of Java 10 installed, but I'm actually going to install this as an update. So Mac's going to go ahead and, and verify things for me. Um, I have an installer package. I'm going to get that fired up and ready to go. It's going to ask me to confirm. Oop. Try that again. There we go. Over here, I'm on Windows again, looking at the standard installer. Um, and this is a pretty straightforward process. The, you know, Oracle's put together a nice installer. Uh, this does take a minute, but it should be a, a straightforward install. Here, it looks like it succeeded on Mac, so I'm all done. Throw out the installer, and I'm finished. Um, Windows looks like it's still working. Um, let's see, I, I, you don't need to enable Java content in the browser. We're not going to use that. Our in-browser Java programming environment does not use Java in the browser. It actually sends your code across the internet to a set of servers that we have set up, runs it, and then sends you back the results. So Java doesn't actually run in the browser. The installer is bragging here that 3 billion devices run Java. Um, I think that number includes many Android phones. So Android is currently a Java-powered platform. That may change in the future, but right now that's one of the biggest ways that Java has achieved really truly global reach. So right now when you're installing these tools, you don't necessarily really know what they're for or necessarily what they do. And for a while, we're going to be working within IntelliJ, the integrated development environment that we'll set up next, and there's a certain amount of magic that's going on behind the scenes. We may talk a little bit about that this semester, and we may not. Um, but just so you understand, Java is both a tool that allows you to turn your programs into something that the computer can run, and then there's also a separate tool that actually runs those programs. So whenever you run a piece of computer code using Java, um, the code is first compiled into an executable, and then it's run inside what's called the Java Virtual Machine. So that's the difference between the Java Development Kit, or the Java SDK, and the Java Runtime Environment, or the Java Run, R, or the JRE. The JRE does not include a compiler, 
whereas the SD clay includes a compiler, which allows you to write your own Java code. Um, the Java runtime environment only includes um, the Java tool that allows you to run Java programs that other people have written. All right, so it looks like this is done. Uh, we don't need to look at the tutorials yet, and we're all set. So that's the process. It's quite straightforward. Um, the only thing to keep in mind is really make sure that you follow the right link and that you install Java 10.0.2.